In the Texas High Plains, forage sorghums have a very good fit for in our livestock industry. Especially as we become water limited, forage sorghums are a very drought tolerant, water efficient alternative to corn. While corn is often the silage of choice because of its feed value, forage sorghums actually do have a feed value that's 80 to 90 percent of corn if managed properly. And so it's really important that we evaluate different forage sorghums, uh, specifically for silage, so that we can really offer optimize not only the production with regards to tonnage, but also the quality of that silage. And that's really where we have value in our trial at Fishland. We're currently wrapping up our third year. Uh, this year we have over 100 sorghum hybrids. And so of course while we have uh, three very good years, this is actually a continuation of research that has been conducted at, at Fishland for over 15 years. So it's really a long-term project that's really been very vital for our feed industry, both the beef cattle industry as well as the dairy industry. This year at Bishla, not only were we looking at the production with regards to tonnage, but we are also looking at the quality at harvest. And of course that's really critical because the quality of the silage really is going to be based on the quality of the forage that was in siled. Now of course end user management really is important with regards to silage production. And so we are also looking at um, in siling duration for forage sorghums. We actually have a trial where we're looking at forage sorghums that are in siled for 30, 60, in 120 days to optimize not only the energy but that in use feed value of that forage sorghum. In addition to the ensiling duration, one of the big concerns for end users is actually the uh, grain processing. And oftentimes that sorghum berry is not cracked when it's ensiled, which can reduce the feed value and the carbohydrate availability. And so we are looking at uh, forages that have been cracked, the berry has been cracked, as well as the berry being unprocessed. So we can determine how the processing of that berry might affect the feed value of that forage. One of the challenges that we've had this year are sugarcane aphids. We've had to spray twice in order to manage sugarcane aphids. However, uh, there's a big concern across the region with regards to sugarcane aphids and how that might affect the quality of our forage sorghums. So we have a very good opportunity to go in and evaluate how the sugarcane aphids might affect not only the production with regards to tonnage, but also the quality of that forage sorghum. And so that's something that we're looking at as well as as making notes of the levels of sugarcane aphid infestation in all the hybrids that are in our trial. So that's something that's going to be very important in this region, especially as water becomes limited, producers do not have the irrigation capacity for our corn silage, um, water, uh, the forage sorghums are really going to become that alternative. Of course, when we start talking about forage sorghums and the management of forage sorghums and being that they are drought tolerant, it is important for our producers to realize that just because the forage sorghums are drought tolerant does not necessarily mean that we can avoid irrigation. Even forage sorghums that are managed for optimum production can use up to three to four tenths of an inch per day. So that's always up to that producer. What is their yield goal? What is the maturity class that they're planting? You know, how are they going to manage that forage to optimize production? And of course with that, they need to know uh, what their end user wants. Are we targeting an end user who simply wants um, roughage or are we really going to someone who really is trying to optimize the energy and the feed value of this 